everybody, this week a beautiful bar stool made out of scrap hardwood and epoxy. And so, scrap hardwood, no kidding, here's the March of the Lonely Wood Scraps. We had a ton of it from a bunch of different hardwood varieties and, and some hard to find hardwoods in little pieces and thought would make a great addition to a bar stool. So, I started out with thinking about how I would form. Uh, a round circle to hold all these pieces together and I thought aluminum flashing would work out pretty well so I cut a two inch strip of the aluminum flashing to act as a form and now I'm just cutting just a ton of the little pieces that I had into an inch and a half length. I put a little block on my mini sled here so that all my cuts were the same and although I was playing around a little bit with the design here I didn't need to I just wanted to make sure that I had enough pieces, enough dowels, enough rectangles, enough triangles uh, to fill up this 13 and a quarter inch form. I also had a bunch of little pieces that I was going to use to fill in the little nooks and crannies and that's going to work out pretty well and I've got a ton of those. So as I played around with that aluminum form it was too wobbly, it never really held a perfect circle. So I took another piece of scrap plywood and I'm going to cut out a 13 and a quarter inch circle out of it to help me support that aluminum form. And I can't write upside down, but I can find center. So we'll put a little screw in as a guide in the center of this thing and we'll take it over to our, our jig on the bandsaw to help us cut that circle. We'll mark it out, we'll put a little guide hole and now I can cut that 13 and a quarter inch. It's as close to perfect as I can get. Now initially I wasn't thinking how I would use that circle piece that I cut out, but that came in handy later on. But right now this particular piece of plywood is going to hold that aluminum flashing as a spring form, kind of like uh, you'll see in a cake pan. And we'll tape it so that it, it fits the outer perimeter. We're also going to use some thin little garbage bag plastic to help me seal it all up and make sure the epoxy doesn't leak out when we pour it. I also didn't want the plastic bag there to bunch up in the corners and be uneven, so I put some double-faced tape around the inside perimeter so that the plastic would fit tight up against the walls and tight across the bottom. And so you're just kind of pushing it in here like a pie crust. for those that have ever done a pie. But I'm using my nails to get it tight into the corners. So here comes the artistic part. So I had some round dowels, I laid those out, I had some long rectangular pieces in different colors, and I was trying to make it look as random as possible, you know, without having all the blocks of maple all bunched up in one spot, it didn't really look that good, so I tried to mix the colors up. And before I added all the tiny little pieces, I'm going to start to fill in the epoxy. And I, I used a green glossy colorant to the epoxy, but I left all the pieces in the form loose so that the epoxy would get down to the bottom and start to lock those pieces in. Once that was done, I could put in the little pieces and kind of jam them in there and tighten up that whole form. Now when this was done, yeah, I don't show it on camera, but I added about another half quart of epoxy colored, color, with colorant to fill that up and cover over uh, the entire form. Now at this point I was trying to figure out, I didn't really have a complete design in my head for how the legs were going to attach to the bottom, but I started out with making, uh, just with again, more plywood that I had in my bin, about a one and a half inch form, and I'm going to cut this off into an octagon shape. Those pencil lines show that I'll be cutting off those corners. And I wanted to feature the idea for the legs came after a visit to a, a really interesting specialty wood store in Mason, Michigan called Michigan Barnwood and they had these whiskey barrel staves that you could buy and they're gonna make great legs for this particular stool. So now the epoxy's hard, it's time to take off the spring form here and see what we got. And it's gonna look a little bit initially like a green blob um, until we can get it sanded off. But the, 
plastic comes off relatively easy. It doesn't stick to the epoxy all that well, but you can see there's some even unevenness to the bottom and we'll have to get that ground down and sand it off. So start it off with some pretty heavy grit on almost using this as a grinder to, to get that epoxy down. And then we finished it off with the circular sander to get it right here. And I'm going to talk about the chef pants because it, <laughs> these things have showed up in other videos too. That's one of those jobs that helped pay for college. Um, and you can buy these pants online for like 20 bucks. And they're 100% cotton, big pockets. Uh, they wind up being great shop pants. Because if you ruin them, it's no big deal. So after some more finish sanding, I am really like, really liking the way the colors are starting to pop, but they're not popping yet. Watch this. I took a little mineral spirits to wipe it down here and I was just amazed. Uh, it, it looks fantastic. So of course I've got to finish that with a gloss epoxy, but uh, that'll come towards the end. So at this point, I'm just gonna cut off my 45 degree corners off of this uh, form. And again, this will wind up serving as the base to attach the legs. This particular piece I'm gonna have to uh, uh, epoxy to the actual stool top. And then I'll be able to attach my legs to this. So when I was taking the raw legs, taking a look at them, you know, they're not, they can't really sit straight up and down. They're bowed anyway. But in order to provide some stability, I need for those legs to kind of bow out so that the legs sit uh, further out than the top of the stool, and that'll make it more stable on the floor. So I cut a little taper on the leg, and now when I put it up against the form, that taper forces that bowed leg out at an angle so that uh, when it sits on the floor, it's got a good wide stance. And I just cut those off by hand, but it was the same angle on each one of those staves. So at this point, we're going to mix up a little uh, fast curing epoxy and we'll glue that form to the bottom of the stool. And I just glopped it in there nice and thick so that when we put weight on it, it would, uh, it would squeeze down and squeeze out. And we'll put some weight on it and we'll let it sit. And so now I'm just trying to put a routed edge on the stool top so that it's round on the top and that doesn't have anything sharp to sit on. And with a little more sanding, it's time for the finished coat. Now this is a different epoxy. This is called mirror glaze. And this stuff is really thick. So the idea is to pour it on there, kind of let it flow, get it around the outside. It's going to drip off a little bit. You have to check it. And then the instructions will tell you as bubbles start to form to the top, you just use a propane torch over the top of it by about six inches and those bubbles will pop and you get a beautiful gloss finish. So now it's time to figure out <laughs> how to get those legs attached to the base. And this is where that little circle cutout comes in handy because it sort of helps me keep everything in place while I'm taking some measurements and figuring out. I also needed to cut a cross support for the stool so I had two pieces of oak and I'm going to wind up channeling them out so that they lock in together into the form of a, an X. And so with my saw blade set at the right depth, I'm going to channel these two pieces out so that they can fit together. And I'll get those epoxied together and it'll be nice and firm to put between the legs. The other thing I did that's not on camera here is that because the legs are not at 90 degrees, they're, they're, they're curved all the way to the bottom, I cut a little bit of a taper on each one of these cross pieces uh, so that it fit more tightly against the oak barrel staves. And now before I actually epoxy these in, I'm just getting them assembled. And so I'm going to wind up using some long cabinet screws 
two of them for each one of these cross supports, each one of these legs. And that'll hold everything together for me. And now I can pull out that temporary circle piece. The other thing that I did is I was trying to figure out how to actually get these legs attached to the base and screws just aren't going to do it. Um, I wanted something a little tougher and I also wanted to find a way to lock those legs into the top. So I cut out a little channel here with a Forstner bit and chiseled them out so that they were square. And each one of those legs will kind of fit down into that channel and as you pull it close to the plywood form, they, they sort of lock together in place. And that's going to turn out to be a great little uh, mechanism to, to pull these pieces together. So from here I'm going to drill all the way through that stave, through the plywood form, and then I'm going to use a quarter 20 bolt to pull it all together and lock it into place. The other thing that I'm going to wind up doing here is I don't have a foot rail on this and I'm going to try to find a way to put a curved uh, metal piece at the very bottom so that it holds the outer part of those staves together uh, and provides a foot rest. But this is how it came out. It really looks great. Uh, we used a little bit of spray lacquer on the legs uh, to give it uh, a semi-gloss shine. But I really like the way this looks. The lighting isn't that great here, but I'm going to show you in a second with, with the right lighting how the colors pop. And we used a ton of different hardwoods and they just came out fantastic. It was a really fun project with a great result. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us for the video. We really hope you liked it. And we also hope you subscribe to the channel. Take care.